بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا الله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم First of all on this auspicious day which happens to be the first day of the month of Rajab this holy month which is one of the first months of which is one of the months of uh, Hurum Al-Ashhur Al-Hurum fighting in it is forbidden at the time of Jahiliyyah and Islam came and approved this act in fact one of the four months in the year which at the time of pre-Islam the Arabs used to cease fire this month and then the last two months of the year the Qa'dah and the Hijjah and the first month of the year Muharram so this month is a holy month a sacred month in addition to its sanctity its greatness and there are numerous ahadith you can refer to them in Mafatih al-Jinan about the merit of this month the merit of fasting in this month paying sadaqah in this month doing istighfar in this month astaghfirullah wa as'aluhu tawbah that's the methodology of istighfar in this month astaghfirullah wa as'aluhu at-tawbah person is highly recommended to recite this 70 times every day in this month fasting at least one day in this month as the hadith of imam al-kazim alayhi salam himself says that rajab is the name of a river in jannah that is whiter than milk sweeter than honey a person who fasts one day in rajab will be allowed to drink from this river inshallah in jannah of course when we say fasting drinking from the river applying the principles of fast as well not just fasting while cheating and lying and god forbid committing all the other sins and that's why one of the first du'as if you read in Mafatih al-Jinan when our Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, used to look at the crescent of the month of Rajab towards the end of this du'a the first du'a in fact if you read Mafatih al-Jinan the first thing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he used to say after reading some verses of the du'a he would say at the end وَلَا تَجْعَلْ نَصِيبَنَا مِنْهُ الْجُعَ وَالْعَطَشْ and don't make it such that our only reward or our only benefit or our only gain from this month is ju' and atash, hunger and thirst. In other words, we fast, wal'iyadu billah, but only to get hungry and get thirsty without our reward. So the Prophet ﷺ used to say, Ya Allah, don't make it such that this month we fast and the only thing we gain is hunger and thirst, wal'iyadu billah. So when we say that fasting a day in the month of Rajab will attain person insha'Allah uh, that special river or a drink from that special river in Jannah, it's when you apply the rest of the package as well. That is required. Being a mu'min, being a muttaqi, following the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and then of course fasting this extra day. In addition to this, 
this holy month observes a lot of wiladat, of great ma'sumin and great personalities. The greatest, I guess, on the 13th day of Rajab, the wilad of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Which will be commemorating, inshallah, in a couple of weeks approximately. And today, the first day of Rajab, this blessed month, its blessings is added with the blessings of the birth of our fifth Imam, Al Baqir, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Who was born in the 57 year after Hijrah? 57. Imam Hussein died in what year? 61. Therefore, how many years did he spend with Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam? Four years. And indeed, he has not narrated a lot of a hadith about Karbala, but there is a hadith when he narrates about the baby when he was killed. He said Imam Hussein took the blood, threw it to the skies. Imam al Baqir narrates this hadith and he says, Not a single drop came back. So apparently he remembers that incident. And he also narrates another hadith from Imam al Hussein when he was in Mecca before heading to Iraq. So even though at the age of three, he still remembered some of the ahadith or some of the occasions that happened with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. So he was raised with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam for four years. Then the event of Karbala took place. Apparently he was there in Karbala. He took the journey with the, with the family of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And he lived for 19 years approximately after that with his father al Imam. Al-Sajjad salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Then of course, he died, he was martyred in the year 114 after Hijrah at the age of 57. So from 57 after Hijrah to 114, that's 57 years approximately. So this is the life of this great Imam. But if we analyze some of the events that happened in the life of this Imam, we will shed some of the lights First of all, upon the name of Al-Imam, Al-Imam Al-Baqir, his title. We'll come to that, inshallah. And then we'll shed some light. What would the Imams like of us to do? This latter question will be answered throughout the lecture. Al-Imam Al-Sajjad, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, one day came to visit Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, this great companion. Now imagine, Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam is a ma'asum, infallible. He himself goes out to visit Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari in his house. At that time, at that stage, Jabir عليه, is very old. Jabir, as you know, he's the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He was in Uhud. His father got killed in Uhud. This is Jabir ibn Abdullah. So you can imagine how long he lived with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then with Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, then with Imam al-Hasan, then Imam al Hussein. And then Imam al-Sajjad and got to see Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. So Imam al-Sajjad came to visit Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. This Jabir, brothers and sisters, he was the first to walk to Imam Hussein on the Arba'een, the 40th day of Imam Hussein after his martyrdom. The first to walk to Imam Hussein on the 40th. Apparently, he was not the first to visit the grave of Imam al Hussein. From history, apparently, he was the third person to visit the grave of Imam al Hussein after his burial, of course, after Imam al Sajjad buried the bodies. The third was Jabir, but he was the first to walk in Arba'een with his companion Atiyah. By that time, Jabir had grown very old and he's lost his vision, his eyesight, when he heard that Al-Imam Al-Hussein salam got killed in Karbala, he walked. He said, we need to go to see him, to see the grave, visit the grave. He went 
the first to visit on the day of Arba'in, and the story is famous, while he sat on the grave of Imam Hussein sallallahu alayhi and read that beautiful ziyarah. This man, subhanallah, he started the sunnah, the tradition of visiting Imam al Hussein in Arba'in. Our Imams later approved of this sunnah, which was established by Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari. Say, we have a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi who says, Man sanna sunnatan hasana kana lahu ajraha. وَأَجْرَى مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَمَنْ سَنَّ سُنَّةً سَيِّئَةً كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وِزْرَهَا وَوِزْرَى مَنْ عَمِلَ بِهَا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ Anyone who establishes a good deed, a good sunnah, something good like Jabir, walking to Imam Hussein was not the tradition of Amir al-Mu'mineen or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He started it. But this sunnah of Jabir was approved by our imams. Imam al-Baqir, Imam al-Sadiq. We have the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein on the 40th day, on the day of Arba'een, condoned by Imam al-Sadiq, encouraged by Ahlul Bayt to approve of the sunnah of Jabir, which means this year, alhamdulillah, some of the mu'mineen from this city went for the ziyarah of Imam al-Hussein, they walked. This year, approximately over 20 million Zayr, this year alone, went walking or went for the ziyarah of Imam al Hussein. Anyone who establishes such a sunnah, he will receive the reward of it and the reward of everyone who uses it or abides by it or goes by it until the day of judgment. This means this year alone, Jabir received that reward of 20 plus. Million Zawar of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The hadith continues, and anyone, God forbid, does a sunnah which is sayyya, something that is evil, something that is bad, and becomes tradition, like celebrating and rejoicing on the day of Ashura. Some people, until this day and age, they celebrate the day of Ashura, it's a day of Eid. I myself have seen people having a wedding on the eve of Ashura. Laylat Ashura, they're celebrating. There's a marriage taking place. I have seen it myself. Some people. Whomever established this sunnah, this tradition of celebrating the day of Ashura, he carries the agony, the pain, the punishment of it, and anyone who performs it until the day of judgment. So brothers and sisters, let us be true followers of Ahlul Bayt. Be careful of God forbid establishing a tradition which will be a negative tradition. Let us be like Jabir, like this companion who established a positive tradition, a good tradition. And a man who Imam al-Sajjad comes to visit, an Imam goes to visit this man and then what happens? He tells his son, Imam al-Baqir, he had his son with him. Imam al-Baqir was a young boy at the time. He tells him, son, go and kiss the head of your uncle. Imam al-Sajjad tells Imam al-Baqir, kiss the head of your uncle. Who's your uncle? Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. Jabir at that time was very old. Again, he was blind. The boy came and kissed the head of Imam of, of Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari. Jabir, he smelled a beautiful fragrance. He said, Young man, who are you? He said, I am Muhammad al Baqir, the son of Ali ibn al Hussein al Sajjad. Jabir hugged him, kissed him. He said, I walked one day to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and he had Hussein on his lap. He was playing with him. He hugged him. He was kissing him. I told him, Yabna Rasulullah, you really love Hussein. He said, Yes, Ya Jabir. He will grow 
to have a son by the name of Zainul Abideen, Ali Zainul Abideen. On the day of judgment, a call will be made. Where is Zainul Abideen? Let him stand up. And he will stand up among the people of Mahshar, the people of the day of resurrection. Then Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abideen, will have a son by the name of Muhammad al Baqir. You will meet Muhammad al Baqir, Ya Jabir. When you meet him, tell him your grandfather, Rasulullah, sends you his salam. And you will not live for much longer after him, Ya Jabir, after seeing him. So this Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari narrated this hadith to Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. This tells us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi announced the names of the Imams one by one. During his time, he appointed the Imams. The Imams were appointed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi at the command of Allah. And this hadith is mentioned by a Hanafi scholar by the name of Sulaiman Al Hanafi Al Qanduzi in a book called Yanabi Al Mawaddah. Not a Shia, Hanafi. He's mentioning this hadith. He mentioned it. So the Prophet gave the salam to his son. This is one, the Prophet names the Imams after him. Second, this shows how much the Prophet loved his progeny, loved his children. Such that he tells Jabir, Jabir, when you see my great grandson, Muhammad al Baqir, tell him your grandfather, Rasulullah, sending you his salam. That shows the love, the compassion of Rasulullah to his progeny, how much he loves them. And then Jabir said to him the message Imam al Baqir salam, said, Wa alayka, ya Jabir, wa ala jaddi salam. And peace be upon you and my grandfather, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And true, a few days later, Jabir died. He did not live much longer after this. He told him, the Prophet told me, I will not live much longer after seeing you. And true, a few days later, he died. Rudwanullahi ta'ala alayhi. Now, brothers and sisters, how many of us would the Imam visit him in his house how many of us would the imam tell his son go kiss his head your uncle's head jabir ibn abdullah al-ansari was a true follower of ahlul bayt alayhim salam are we true followers of ahlul bayt alayhim salam When we fight against each other, when we backbite each other, when we try to slander one another, yes, we will say we love Ahlul Bayt, we follow Ahlul Bayt, but our actions do not follow that of Ahlul Bayt. Ahlul Bayt would not be pleased with us because we claim to follow them, but our actions suggest otherwise we fight amongst each other look at the state of the islam today the islamic state today look at the state of the shia today it's not the way they should be ahlul bayt expect us to follow them the imam visits jabir ibn abdullah that's a lesson for us imam al-baqir alayhi salam goes and kisses the head of Jabir. That's a lesson for us. It's a lesson that we need to put our personal egos and bias aside. But it's very difficult to do so. It is not easy. A man comes to Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam and insults his mother right in front of him. He insults his mother. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam looks at him, smiles. He says, if my mother is true, like what you said, then may Allah forgive her. 
And if she's not, as you have said, may Allah forgive you. And do you know who the mother of Imam al-Baqir was? Fatima, the daughter of Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says she was a fadila, an honorable lady, a truly honorable lady. So Imam al-Baqir carried, let's say, the gene of Imam al Hussein and Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, alayhi salam, both. From Imam al-Sajjad and Fatima, the daughter of Imam al-Hasan. Sometimes we might bear it if someone attacks us personally. We might, you know, control ourselves. But how would you react if someone attacks someone you really love? Like your spouse, like your parent, like your son. How would you feel? Especially if the attack was also wrong. It's not even right. Sometimes maybe there is truthful to it. There is truth to it. Maybe my son is wrong. Maybe my spouse is wrong. I should be with the haqq, with the truth. Not just because he's my son, I always take his side. A lot of time marriage problems happen. And the wife would go to the family of the husband telling them that your, your son is not being fair. This is what he's doing. A, B, C, D. They say, no, no, no. Our son cannot do something like this. He's always right. This is not fair. They have to go with the haqq, with the truth. And similarly, vice versa. A son would go to the family and say, your daughter is doing this and this and this. Help us. Say, no, no, no. It can't be the case. Our daughter is always... This is the mentality of jahiliyyah. Jahiliyyah, they had a slogan in, at the time of ignorance. Support and help your brother, whether he is oppressor or the oppressed. Doesn't matter. If your tribe man, if somebody from your family, your clan, calls says, help me. You go help him. خلص. That's it. You don't need to ask, what's the problem? Who is at fault here? It's always the other party at fault. Whether he's an oppressor or oppressed. Today we are reliving this mentality. He's from my family. He's of my side. This is how we are. But even if it were wrong, we may not bear to see someone insulting a dear loved one. Imam al-Baqir is teaching us this lesson. That forgive. Be patient. Be patient. And this is what the Qur'an says. That's why Ahlul Bayt resemble the Qur'an. Qur'an says, Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. When someone does bad thing to you, repel it with good. And then Qur'an later says, فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةً كَأَنَّهُ وَتْ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ The person who is an enemy becomes a dear friend. And that's what happened with this man. When Imam al-Baqir treated him as such, he came asking him for forgiveness. He said, forgive me, Ibn Rasulullah. This great manners of yours, I have never seen in anyone else. That's why the Quran tells us in the ayah I recited, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaqu Allah, wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Believers, you need to attain the level of taqwa. Taqwa. Because to be able to side with the truth away from personal bias, to be able to go leave personal egos aside, requires that self-control. Taqwa. But then to learn how to perform it in the way of Allah's obedience, you need to learn from who? You need to be with the truthful ones. Who are the truthful ones? According to the ahadith, narrated in both schools of thought. They are Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi majma'een. Imam al-Baqir expects this from us. His name is al-Baqir. Al-Baqir. 
as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said in the hadith, يَبْقُرُ أَوْ بَقَرَ الْعِلْمَ بَقْرَ which means he knows all the ins and outs of knowledge, all the details of knowledge. A man by the name of Abdullah ibn Nafi' al-Azraq. This man was a Khariji from the Khawarij. This man used to roam around the cities saying, If anyone can prove to me that when Ali ibn Abi Talib killed the people of Nahrawan, the Khawarij, he had justice and had a right to do so, I will believe. In Ali ibn Abi Talib as a Muslim, believe it or not, as a Muslim, subhanAllah. Ya they told him, why don't you go and ask Al Alimu min Ali Muhammad, the knowledgeable one of Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He said, well, there, is there any more Alim left of them? They told him, this is the first indication of your ignorance. If you don't know there is a Alim today alive from Ali Muhammad, this is the first indication. Subhanallah, you can tell those people who really talk about like this about Ahlul Bayt, what kind of quality they are. They don't know much. In fact, they don't know anything. Look what they're doing today to the followers of Ahlul Bayt. He said, So who is the one who's the Alim today? They told him, Muhammad al Baqar, salawatullah wa salamu alayhi. Go to him. Where is he? He's in Medina. He says, Okay. He went to Medina. He came to the door of Imam al-Baqir knocked at the door. The servant opened the door, came back to Imam al-Baqir told him, Ya ibn Rasulullah. He said, what? He said, Abdullah bin Nafi' ibn al-Azraq. This man is at the door. He said, strange, this guy, he always curses me and curses Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. What is he doing at our door? He said, he's come to question you about the people of Nahrawan. He says, if anyone can prove to me that Ali had a right in killing the people of Nahrawan, I would believe in him as a Muslim. Imam al-Baqir told the servant, tell him to come back tomorrow then. Ask him to return tomorrow. He went, came back the next day. The next day, Imam al-Baqir gathered the children of al-Muhajirin and al-Ansar. By that time, there were no companions left at that stage. Most of them have died already. In fact, all of them had died. So their children were there though, the children. He gathered their children, the Muhajirin and the Ansar, in front of Nafi' or Abdullah. He said, can any one of you who has memorized any hadith of the merits of Ali ibn Abi Talib from his father, stand up and say it in front of this man. So people started getting up, said, yes, I heard my father saying this and this about Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Prophet said this and this about Ali ibn Abi Talib, and so on and so forth. He said, yes, I know all of this. You know, I agree. Everything they're saying is true. But that's before Ali killed the people of Nahrawan. When he killed them, he became a kafir. So everything they're saying is true. But that's before. He said to him, okay. He said, what about the hadith of the day of Khaybar? The hadith of Khaybar. Anyone here has heard the hadith of Khaybar? Yes, we've heard it. What is it? He said, tomorrow I will give the banner to a man who loves Allah, the Prophet the famous hadith, who loves Allah and his messenger. And Allah and his messenger love him back. He is a victorious man. He will not be defeated and will bring victory to Muslims. He said, yes, I know this hadith too. He said, so you agree of it? He said, yes. But he said, that's before Nahrawan. So we haven't changed anything. Imam al-Baqir turned to him and said, hold on a second now. So you agree this hadith is accurate? He said, yes, true. I agree. He said, the hadith says, Allah loves him. Allah loves Ali ibn Abi Talib. So he says to him, when Allah loved Ali ibn Abi Talib in Khaybar, was Allah aware that Ali ibn Abi Talib one day will fight 
against the people of Nahrawan or was he not aware? Did he know or did he not know? If you say he did not know, then you're a kafir. Because you're saying Allah's knowledge is limited. Allah doesn't know. At the time of Khaybar, yes, Allah loves Ali ibn Abi Talib. But Allah didn't know that Ali ibn Abi Talib will fight against the people of Nahrawan. This is not Allah wal billah. So did Allah know or did he not know? Was he aware or was he not aware? He couldn't say much. He was cornered. So he had to answer with what? Yes. Allah was aware. Allah knew. He said, okay. So Allah knew that Ali ibn Abi Talib one day will fight against the Khawarij and yet he still loved Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, yes. He said, that's true. He said, Allah loves people because they obey him or because they disobey him. Allah loves people because they obey him or disobey him. He said, because they obey him, obviously. He said, which means Ali ibn Abi Talib is always in the obedience of Allah. Which means that's why Allah loves him. Because Ali ibn Abi Talib is always in the obedience of Allah. He said, yes. He said, this answers your argument. Your argument is invalid. This is your answer to your question. You're saying, show me the right of Ali ibn Abi Talib to fight the people of Nahrawan. Ali ibn Abi Talib is always in the obedience of Allah. Never disobeys Allah. That's why Allah loves Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And that's why he had all the right to fight and kill the people of Nahrawan. This man got up and he said, I have never heard this argument before. And he said, the ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Hatta yatabayyana al-khayt al-abyad min al-khayt al-aswad. Until the, you know, the ayah is referring to the fasting. You fast until the white light or the dawn breaks from the black light or the dark, the night. So he says, now I have seen the light, basically, the white light, the nur, the light. And I was in darkness. Now I have seen it. So Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam had this wealth of knowledge to speak with such individuals. And Imam al-Baqir wants us to be the same. If not the same, then at least follow the path of Imam al-Baqir To be able to stand up for our religion, to defend our religion, to defend our Imams alayhim salam Today, Islam is being hijacked by a group of extremists who are themselves, themselves do not understand a word of Islam, even though they claim to be Muslims. They don't follow Islam even though they claim to be Muslims. Their actions are condemned by all Muslims. Even though they claim to be Muslims. But we brothers and sisters need to speak. We need to rise. We need to write. In the past month or so with the events that were taking place worldwide. Whether in the United States, whether in Syria with the grave of Hijr ibn Adi Allah ta'ala alayh with other events how many of us stood up to speak to mention something to say something all we're doing is say la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al al azim no. too bad our religion is being hijacked we're being called this and we're being called that in the media how many of us communicate we need to educate ourselves to stand up, to rise, to speak, to defend. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, I have not seen people who revived our tradition except for the traditions of my father. Except for four people. Out of the companions of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he mentions four. Who are they? One, Zurara ibn A'yun. Zurara. Two, Abu Basir al Layfi. Abu Layth al Muradi. Abu Basir Layth al Muradi. Three, Muhammad ibn Muslim. And four, 
بريد ابن معاوية العجلي four people زرارة أبو بصير محمد بن مسلم and بريد four he said those people those four memorized the hadiths of my father al baqir alayhi salam and they taught it to others and they revived the tradition they rushed to us in dunya so they will rush to us in akhirah kanu min as-sabiqin ilayna fi dunya wa as-sabiqin fi al-akhirah as-sabiqin ilayna fi al-akhirah allah what does it say wa as-sabiqun as-sabiqun ulaik al وقربوا. They rush to us in dunya. They rush to us to learn from us, to follow us. And in the akhirah, they will also rush to us. Those four individuals, they stood up for the religion of Islam. Imam al-Sadiq is saying this. This is the testimony of Imam al-Sadiq, not of any individual. How many of us are standing up for Islam, defending Islam? You know, until recently, you'll be surprised. Yesterday, some of the mu'mineen, they joined me in a church. And the MC at the church, I visited this church a month ago. The MC said, last month, when this speaker came, some people in the congregation of that church went to the MC, who was there yesterday, from the same church, and told her, we have seen a new face to Islam that we are not exposed to. In this day and age, in the age of internet and media and satellite TV and, 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 people are not used to the true face of Islam. This means we have a lot of work to do. But in order for us to present Islam, we need to carry the spirit of Islam, the akhlaq of Islam. The manners of Islam. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam raised these people, those four individuals, to carry the spirit of Islam. Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari radhuanullah ta'ala alayhi carried the spirit of Islam. At that old age, he goes to walk to Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam for his ziyara. Today, we heard Hadith Al-Kisa. Who narrated Hadith Al-Kisa? From Jabir ibn Abdullah Al-Ansari. This is Tawfiq. Tawfiq. Out of all the Prophet's companions, in this particular incident, it is this one, whom his name is mentioned in Hadith Al-Kisa. And his name is mentioned repeatedly, whenever Hadith Al-Kisa is narrated. Out of all the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Kumail ibn Ziyad was the one who the dua of Kumail was named after him. Out of all the companions of Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam, Abu Hamza al-Thumali, whose name was Malik ibn Dinar, or Thabit ibn Dinar, his name is remembered, is mentioned. Coincidence? Of course not. Of course not. Abu Hamza Thumali, this man, he says, one day I came to visit Baqir. I was there in Baqir. A messenger comes to me and he says to me, answer the call of your Mawla, your master. So I went. Who is his master? Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam at that stage. He came to Imam al-Sadiq, Abu Hamza. Imam al-Sadiq tells Abu Hamza, Ya Abu Hamza, إِنِّي لَأَسْتَرِيحُ لِرُؤْيَتِكِ He says, I find comfort in seeing you. Abu Hamza. How many of us, and let's be genuine between us and Allah, with the Imam today, look at us and tells us, I feel comfortable in seeing you. When we examine our actions, today alone, have I done ghiba today? Have I spoken about others? Have I backbited people? Have I slandered individuals? The past week, let me sit down and think. In my heart, do I have something against a relative of mine, 
my own brother or my own sister, or my own father and mother or my uncle and my aunt, against another mu'min or mu'mina, do I have something in my heart or not? Do I try to put them down? Do I try to make trouble for them? Create problems? What kind of a person am I really? What kind of a person am I? Yes, I come to mosque, walhamdulillah. I pray, walhamdulillah. It's great that we do all these things. But we need to live the life of Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam there was a man who was with Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, a companion who was a scholar, a learned, alim. His name was Mughira ibn Sa'id. This man used to come with Imam al-Baqir, study with Imam al-Baqir, a companion of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. And then this man all of a sudden started saying Imam al-Baqir is a god, wal-iyadu billah. He's a god. His knowledge is not a knowledge of a, a human being. He must be a god. وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ غُلَاتِ مُغَالِي Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen says هَلَكَ فِيَّ اثْنَان مُحِبٌ غَالِي وَعَدُوٌ قَالِي He says two people will perish because of me. Some people who praise me so much that they make me Allah وَالْعِيَاضُ بِاللَّهِ And those who fight against me, hate me, my enemies. Those, both of them will end up in Jahannam. This man was a companion, a good person. All of a sudden he becomes like this. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam tells another companion, talks to another companion by the name of Sulaiman. He says, Sulaiman, do you know what is the example or the similitude of Mughira ibn Sa'id? He says, what? He said, his example is like that of Bal'am ibn Ba'ura. Bal'am ibn Ba'ura was at the time of Prophet Musa from the children of Israel. This Bal'am ibn Ba'ura, he had Ismullah al-A'zam. Do you know Ismullah al-A'zam? It's basically the name of Allah, the secret name of Allah, that only certain individuals of his creators, of his creation, know about it. And if Allah is asked through this holy name, that's why we read in the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka bismika al-Azim al-A'zam. الأعز الأجل الأكرم الذي إذا دعيت به على أبواب السماء انفتحت. We read in du'a al-sumat, du'a or du'a al-asharat. This, this is the sentence. Oh Allah, I ask you by your sacred name. Bal'am knew that sacred name of Allah. Imagine how, what a kind of a knowledge scholar he was. Prophet Musa comes, is sent as a messenger. He becomes jealous. He says, how come I was not sent as a messenger? I deserve to be a messenger. I know Ismullah al-A'za. I am the one who deserves to be a messenger. Why Musa has become a messenger? So he sides with Fir'aun against Musa. Billah. This alim, this scholar, this person who had piety and taqwa. Billah, finished, destroyed everything. Allah refers to Bal'am bin Ba'ura in the Quran as Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah says about him, Ataynahu ayatina fansalakha minha. In Surah Al-A'raf verse 175, we gave him our signs, but he disassociated himself from our signs. See, this is just like the snake. You see the snake when it kind of de-skins itself to get a new skin? I don't know if some of you have seen this. This is the ayah. That's called insilah. When you actually take off your skin and you put on a new skin. That's insilah. Allah uses the same verb. He had that clothes or the piety, you know, taqwa, ilm, knowledge from Allah. He says he took it off and put on the garments of wal'iyadu billah, shaytan. Shaytan. He became a shaytan. Wal'iyadu billah. Fa'atba'ahu shaytan. Allah says. Shaytan. Fooled him. So some people were with Imam al-Baqir. They attended the majalis of Imam al-Baqir. They attend the centers. They pray. They fast. But then they fail. 
This tells us, brothers and sisters, when we attend the majalis, it's a good thing. We should attend the majalis because Ahlul Bayt say, attend our majalis. Revive our traditions. But at the same time, we need to ask ourselves, are we adopting their values? Do we have taqwa? And are we with the truthful ones? Are we true followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Have I oppressed a single person? Have I oppressed somebody? Have I harassed somebody? I need to go back to Allah. Doing so is not easy, difficult, very difficult. It is very difficult for a person to go to someone who has insulted him and to tell him, I forgive you. Very tough. It's not easy. Not many people can do this. It's very difficult for us to go to a person who's insulted, let's say my wife or my husband or my father or my mother, and tell him, I forgive you. It's very, it's not easy. Because it means you really have to fight your desires. Your desires are telling you, don't do this. You really have to fight it. Fighting it is not easy, but it's doable. It's doable. When Malik al-Ashtar prayed for the man who hit him with the pit of the date, it means he did it. And he's not a ma'asul. Malik is not a ma'asul. He's like you and I. He also has desire, but he controlled his desires. The companions of Imam al-Sadiq and Imam al-Baqir they had people who hurt them, harassed them, yet they would forgive them because they are the true companions of Ahlul Bayt They were true followers of Ahlul Bayt We need to examine ourselves. This month of Rajab is the month where we do istighfar, repentance. This month of Rajab is the month of fasting, recommended fasting. A month where we turn to Allah so to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. So brothers and sisters, let us take the occasion of the birth of the Ma'sumin in this month, like Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam, and Imam Amir Al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, and the others, to really evaluate ourselves. Life is too short. Amir Al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, I have not seen anything shorter than life no matter how long it may appear to be the person says you know i've been living for 50 years you know some of you here might think 50 years ago if you think back 50 years ago what were you doing 50 years ago where were you living 50 years ago where were you 50 years some of us may not have even existed 50 years ago okay 50 years ago but you think 50 years ago since 50 years today 50 years have passed like this, like a blink of an eye, if you think about it. Those of you who have children who are 30 years of age, think for a second. Or oh, they are 20 years old today, think for a second. It feels like yesterday they were born. 30 years have gone now. Your children have gotten children themselves. You become grandparents. What have I done? What have I accomplished? 50 years have gone in my life. Have I spent it as a follower or not? As long as we are still in this dunya, we have chance, we have time. Let's go back. Let's forgive and move on to learn like Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam to forgive. Let's gain the knowledge from Ahlul Bayt like Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Let us learn to defend our religion and speak about our religion like Ahlul Bayt want us to do so. But most importantly, let us carry the akhlaq and the banner of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and behave like their true companions so we could also become true followers, inshaAllah, of Ahlul Bayt. Raise your hand for the dua now, brothers and sisters. We are the guests of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam on this holy day. Remember to pray for our Imams in Baqi. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. Today, inshaAllah, after this, we will be doing ziyar of Imam al-Baqir. But today, if you're in Baqi', you cannot do ziyar of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam. 
And if you do so, you'll be arrested. Let us remember our Imams. They are Mazlumeen in they were the time when they were alive and now after their death. They're still being oppressed. So let us remember to pray for them and pray for all the Mu'mineen and the Mu'minat who are in those regions who are suffering from peace and security. And let us remember to pray for the companions of our Imams alayhim salam and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and the children and their shrines as well of those Ma'sumeen alayhim salam and we have a lot of individuals unfortunately who are extremely ill as you heard earlier from this community and other communities who requested a special dua from us so on this day as we are the guests of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam let us turn to Imam al-Baqir may Allah inshallah accept all our hajat and grant his peace and security and protection to our Imams their shrines our Imam Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif as well as all their Shia, insha'Allah, worldwide. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Amma yujibu al-muttarra idha da'a wa yakshifu al-su' أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 إلهي بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله كفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا الله إلهي بالإمام الباقر اجعلنا وذريتنا إلى يوم الدين من شيعة الإمام الباقر المتقين يا الله ومن خدمته المخلصين يا الله اللهم ارزقنا زيارته في الدنيا عاجلا يا الله وشفاعته في الدنيا وفي القبر وفي الآخرة يا الله اللهم اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات رب اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا ونا هو دليلا 
حتى تسكنه أرضك طوى وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم اللهم أرنا الطلعة الرشيدة والغرة الحميدة واكحل أنظارنا بنظرة منا إليه اللهم نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة إلا ما رزقتنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح أموات الجالسين والحاضرين and especially for the Ruhub Marhuma, the sister of Sayyid Javid Naqwi. Rahim Allah, may yaqra surat al-mubaraka al-fatihati ma'a al-salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim.